Hello and welcome back. I'm Karjan and this is Let's Art, Operation Blinking Mirror Edition. Um, just a reminder, this is on the same day as the last video, so again, if you hear strange cracks and pops, that's my neck protesting. Um, so I'm pretty much finished with almost everything. Um, with the initial outlines and the like. I just... Well, I haven't done the two trees that I roughed in in the background, but that's okay. So... The first... thing I'm going to do is make a complete duplicate. Make a new... folder. And hide all of that and rename this to uh let's see line backups um i'm a teensy bit paranoid about about things so as i start because at this point, I'm going to start erasing and refining my lines. So I make a full backup of the sketch lines in order to, I guess, preserve what I had initially done, just in case I do something absolutely absurd and... Um, and I cannot backtrack far enough to make it make it better so at this point I'm just going back through Refining lines, making them thinner in some places, editing out mistakes I've made. Um, let's see. So this is going to be mostly, mm, I guess, boring since I'm just going back over a lot of things. Um, so I guess I should find something to talk about. Um, hmm. Hmm. Talking subjects. Oh dear. <sighs> okay. Welcome back. Um, I'm Karjan, and this is Let's Art, Operation Blinking Mirror Edition. Um, so, I've now finished most of the initial lines. So now I'm going to duplicate everything. Create a new group. Drop all of the copies into it. Close the group and turn it off. And name this initial lines backup. Um, that's a that's a habit of mine that I started doing after I accidentally messed up in a 
step in a refining in refining my lines at one point and I couldn't go backwards enough to fix it so I ended up having to redo a significant portion of the piece of art and ever since then I've always made backups of each stage of, uh, of art as a just-in-case. Um, I generally hope to never have to use those backups, but they've come in handy more than once. So I continue to do it, and I will probably always do it. Um, so just as a reminder, um, this is the this is the same day as the previous recording, which means that my neck is still very much messed up. Although I have taken some aspirin and it's stopped hurting quite as much, but my neck is still popping, which means that if you hear anything on the recording that's kind of a pop or a crackle, that's probably my neck deciding that it wants to pop and doesn't always happen but I can't always prevent it from doing so and sometimes I actively try to make it make it pop because it does make it feel better briefly um, Anyway, what I, basically at this point, I'm just going through and refining my lines and getting it to where I am satisfied. Because then we'll leave behind all of these neon colors and move into uh, actually coloring. Which is honestly the part that I enjoy the most. It's just much more fun than all of this fiddling around with, with lines. I mean, I know the fiddling is necessary. Obviously. Because if you don't have lines, then you don't really have don't really have anything to go off of when you actually start coloring. But I still don't like doing it. Um. Uh, let's see. I guess in order to avoid being silent, because all, all I'm going to be doing is just going over and over and over the lines until I'm satisfied. Or as close to satisfied as I can get. Um, so I guess I should probably figure something out, figure out something to talk about. Um... Hmm... It's far too large of a brush. Um, talking subject, talking subjects. Well, more like rambling subject. <sighs> You'll notice that I have a tendency to do that a lot. I will accidentally change, change my brush, change my erasing brush, and then think that I'm still think that I have it set to uh, set to coloring and I'll accidentally erase pieces of pieces of the lines pieces of the line work um, he's actually got
got a bit of a cowlick flip up here that I didn't didn't put in place. There we go. Now let's refine these lines back down. Um, hmm. And this is why I don't talk much in real life. Because I never know what to talk about. Well, I guess since this is a Soikoden related thing, I guess I could talk about my first introduction to the game itself. Um, it was it was actually an accident, as most true awesome things really are. Um, I was renting. I rented a lot of video games as a kid, and there was a specific video game that I wanted to rent. I don't even remember what it was anymore, so obviously I, didn't, I don't care that much, didn't care that much, or it didn't make that big of an impact on me. Um, but the shop that I was, that my parents took me to, didn't have that game in, it was rented by someone else, but I wanted something to play, because I'd finished all of the games that I owned, which is something that I don't believe most people who know me now would honestly believe, because I have a terrible habit of never finishing games. Um, so... I start looking around at the available games, and I see this one called uh, Swakenin 3. And I look at it, and I'm like, well, maybe this this would be an acceptable game to play. I wasn't really sold on it. You know, it looked a bit odd to me at the time. I don't even remember how old I was. Um, but I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. There's, there's nothing else here that really interests me. So, I'll give it a shot. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm sitting there in my computer slash gaming room, and I'm playing this game, and I just cannot put it down. And it was a five-day rental. And playing this game through, I'm playing this game through, I'm playing this game through, I'm having so much fun playing this game through, that when it ends up being that, you know, renting time is five days are out, and, you know, it's time to return it, I, I basically tell my mom, you know, I don't want to, I, I haven't finished this game yet, blatant lie, I already had finished it, at least once. Um, I want to rent it again. So... I get the game again. And I play it through again. And I don't remember how many times I went back to that game. Um, I just kept coming back to it. Kept playing it. And all of my... All of my um, PlayStation 2 cards have 
multiple save files for Suikoden so 2. I don't know how many, or Suikoden so 3 rather. I don't know how many save files I actually have from that game. Because I would just keep doing it over and over and over again. And I would always make a new always make a new save. I'd never delete never deleted my old saves. So I have I have an entire memory card that's basically labeled Slikadin saves. And that was my first introduction to the entire series. I was like, this is the best game ever. It's awesome. I like these characters. I like, you know, I like all of this stuff. And actually, if, if you've played the game, you know that it has a, uh, a trinity system. Where you're following the three... You're following the three potential main characters. Well, I always liked... I always liked Ghetto best, the mercenary captain. I always liked the mercenary captain best. His, you know, he was older, kind of stoic, generally had a, a more worldly view on things. So the first time I played the game through, I played through his chapters first. And I kind of ended up getting this sort of mm, rather skewed vision of, of the other characters because I played through all of all of the mercenary captains chapters. 1, 2, and 3. I played through them straight instead of doing all of the chapter 1s and then all of the chapter 2s and then all of the chapter 3s. And then I decided that Hugo interested me more between the other two characters. And so while playing through Hugo's chapters, I ended up getting this even more skewed opinion on uh, Chris. So I ended up hating Lady Chris for so long. And I actually stopped playing for like an entire day because I didn't want to play Chris's chapters. Because I just, I felt that she was just this sort of incarnation of evil. You know, I mean, she killed Lilu. And sure, looking back on it, you can tell that she really has a bad reaction to doing so. But at the time, I really felt that, you know, she was this incarnation of evil. That she had ordered the, the uh, Grasslanders village to be destroyed, and... Uh, basically did a lot of a lot of evil things but then I played through her chapter and it was like you know she's not quite as bad as I thought she's a little bit prissy and I still don't really like her but she's not quite as bad I suppose that she's acceptable now, I've I've never played I've never played the game through picking her as the as the new flame champion because I don't like her that much. Um, my first pick for flame champion was of course of course Ghetto because I like him bestest. Even now, I still like him best. Um, 
and that's that's sort of a thing with me. I like I tend to like the mercenary cap, the mercenaries the most. I don't entirely know why that is. I mean, maybe it's the bad boy. It's the whole bad boy thing, but at the same time, sometimes I don't really think it's just that. And a lot of it is probably to do with, um... With, with their general, the mercenaries' general attitudes. They're much more pragmatic than most of the other characters in the games. And I've always been generally a relatively pragmatic person. So I tend to like that attitude the best. Um, so anyway, you can see that I'm actually erasing erasing lines like where it's hidden by the hair. And that's the fact that I'm erasing the lines completely is part of the reason why I make a full duplicate of everything as a just-in-case measure. So I can pull bits and pieces out in case I ever need them again. Oops. Also, oops. Don't want to mix that up. I mean, if it's just something simple like that, then yeah, I'll just redraw it, but... his headband. Um, well, there's a few thin lines in there for folds and the like. Because it is cloth. And then Edge this out again. Make it a bit thinner like that. Okay. <sighs> so, after I, uh, After my mom finally convinced me that I couldn't rent the game anymore because, you know, other people other people may want to rent it as well. Whoops. What shape is that? It's kind of a triangly triangly shape. Right there. Um I ended up receiving the game for Christmas because my parents saw that I still really liked it, and I still wanted to continue playing it. And I guess... I don't really remember when I got really interested in questioning why it was why it was called Soiket in 3. Well, I mean, obviously I, I figured that that meant there were other games in the series. But I'd always sort of had this opinion that Oh, I forgot his turtle neck. Okay. You can't really see it based on the way his head is turned. But 
he's got a yellow turtleneck underneath everything. So, that has to go there. Um... So after I finally got tired of playing through so I could in three multiple times, I started trying to look up look up uh, the other so I could in games. You know. Where's where's uh, one and two? They were never on offer in the game sh in the game store for uh, rent because they're PlayStation 1 games and by the time I'd found the Soikoden series it was well past the era of uh, it's actually a clip that's silver and runs back through here like this. So, by the, by the time I finally f I initially found the Soikoden series, um, it was well past the era of uh, the PlayStation 1. So I could never rent them. Not that I honestly believe that the games would ever have been available in my little podong town. Um, given that the for for most of my childhood I believed that having God, what was it? Maybe uh, 30 to 40 PlayStation 2 games. I'm actually kind of surprised they had Soikid in there, now that I think back on it. Was, you know, a lot of games. So, you know, as as I said, I kind of doubt that they that the game store that the rental place that I went to would have had the so I could in one or two. But I had a fully I was fully capable of using the internet. And While I admit that the computers back then weren't quite as capable of emulation as they are now, um, it was still possible. So... My first real introduction to pirating games and playing them on computer was... Um, was honestly Soikid in one. I was that curious about the game. And of course I then branched out from there into into other games and other other things. Um, another series that that I did the same about the same thing with was um, Lunar. Um, I was initially introduced to uh, being able to rent Silver Star Story. Or Silver Star Story Complete. The PlayStation... I think it's PlayStation. Version of, of Lunar 1. Because, you know, that game's been released like four times, each one slightly different, something like that.
So that was Lunar was my second real piece of interest in uh, in pirating. And from there it went on into excuse me. From there it went on into other games, mostly um mostly old SNES Super Nintendo games with the occasional NES game. Because I just found it much more convenient to uh, be able to play play Super Nintendo games on uh, on my computer. That and my actual the actual SNES that I had wasn't really mine. It was my brother's. So. I didn't really have a big collection of games for it. And when I first got into the the uh, pirating pirating shtick I uh, realized that there were much, much more games on the SNES than just Zelda, Castlevania, um, Arkrot, or, uh, what's that game? Uh, it's the, it's the City Builder game. Well, not SimCity, although I had that as well. Um, <sighs> hmm. Uh, it's the game that switches between having to do city builder s sort of things and and uh, side view dungeon monsters and then you have to guide the people that you unlock into building their realm and you get benefits and the like from it that's going to bother me for the rest of the night now. I want to say Ark Rise, but then I'm thinking about a brand new game, which is Ark Rise Fantasia, which is, in my opinion, an absolutely brilliant Wii game. Um, for all that... So long as you can get past the voice acting in the beginning. Um... The, the voice acting in the beginning of, of Arkham's Fantasia is pretty atrocious. Uh, I do feel that it gets better towards the end, as if the people who are doing it are actually getting more in character as the game goes on, and then they didn't bother to go back and, uh... didn't bother to go back and... and recast those like the first half or the first third I think of the uh, of the game it's also a very uh, linear scripted game but I really enjoyed the story in it and for all the fact that I've been a gamer for most of my life and have played RPGs for all of my life. Um, I didn't actually call a lot of the plot points 
which kind of surprised me, considering that I can usually call plot points from a mile away, or at least it feels like that sometimes. So, you know, everything's usually fairly linear. I mean, looking back on it, it, it seems a bit obvious to me. But while I was in the middle of playing it, it, it definitely did not feel obvious. And I was left guessing about a lot more than I actually kind of feel comfortable admitting. That game also interested me to the point where uh, I actually ended up taking my Wii with me because I got it—I got it not long before Christmas break. So I ended up taking my Wii back with me. So I was living in an apartment at the time. Well, I'm still living in an apartment, but I wasn't in a dorm during that that time. So, you know, I ended up taking my Wii back with me so that I could keep playing the game and found and find out how it ended. I think my parents were very amused at me at the time. You know, I, I came back, came back from, uh, from my college, and here I am with, with, uh, with my Wii that I usually, usually left at, at, uh, the place I'd call home. I usually leave all of my all of my consoles. Or put them somewhere else. You know. I don't usually take them with me because it's a little too much effort, in my opinion, for something that I'm usually not going to play. Wow. It's about <clears throat> excuse me. It's about time to time for me to call this. I forgot exactly how much time is spent refining these lines. Yeah, you know, I mean I'm not even not even a Maybe I'm about halfway done with with the lines on Flick. Approximately. Had some... I'm pretty sure the wrinkles I'm putting in aren't actually properly placed, but... can't really be... Arsed. I'm actually pretty bad at clothing. Pretty bad at a lot of things. At least in my opinion I am. touch of wrinkles into there. Uh, let's see. Thin. Thin this down. Mm. 
See, this is actually really tightly put in there. Like that. Um... This is a little more out. And this is a belt that tightens it in. Well, it's more like a strap. Colors will significantly, as always, help differentiate the different pieces out. And then it sort of bells out again underneath there. Because it's not being held tight. trying not to make the lines too thick, but I'm also trying not to make the lines too thin. Let's see. This is supposed to be a little more flat. Isn't this great fun, refining all these lines? to call this here. It's actually looking fairly good, considering what I started with. Um, and I'll see you next video.